let's look at some different kinds of videos you may be creating in your projects. The first one I want to look at is training videos. Training videos can be uh, really common. I think it's probably the most likely thing you'd be asked to make if you're inside of a company. You're probably going to be making training videos. You may be outsourcing that to another company. But if your company's small or you're just beginning or you're an entrepreneur, then you probably have to make some training videos yourself. If you're in school, you probably make some training videos for your department. They'd always love that. So here's a great idea. Use some of the skills we've learned here how not to make a bad video. And maybe you can apply it to offer some training video to your school, your department, your group, or your small company. Let's take a look at some of the things that go along with a training video. In my classes, this is project number one. If you want to try this project, please go ahead and try this. The training video in my projects are very short. 60 seconds or 90 seconds or 120 seconds, which is, well, one minute and 20 seconds, right? So all very, very short. Why did I do that? Because that's just like a kind of commercial ad space. But the real reason to do that is it forces you to get a clear message in your video to not expand it out as we've talked about previously. For this training video, you need to create a video that trains the viewers to do something. And for my students at NCHU, what I'm going to look for is training students who are first year students. So the target audience should be first year undergraduate students just entering NCHU. There are so many things you can teach those new incoming students. Think about all the things that you've experienced since you came to school first, like places to eat, how to sign up for things, how to do things, how to use the library, all of those things. Wouldn't it be great if everybody made some training videos to help those new students? Wouldn't it be great if when you were a new student there were some videos for you to watch? Now those videos were an hour long, oh, that's too much. You wouldn't watch them. But what if somebody told you, here's a video on how to use the library. Here's a video on how to uh, get your food saved in the dormitory. And it's 60, 60 seconds long. I think you would say, wow, uh, yeah, let's do it. I love that. I'll, I'll watch that in a, in a minute. It's not, not too much of my time at all. So that's the project, a training video. Now let's look at training videos a little bit more. In a training video, your main goal is to show how to do a task, right? How to do something. So you're training, right? So you need to get clear what is that task. I mean, you really need to focus down. So if I was to make an, a training video for freshmen, I cannot make a video for everything about freshmen, can I? It has to just be one small, very specific thing. For example, how to get to the cafeteria. For example, how to, where to park your motorcycle. For example, uh, how to sign up for a class. Even that might be a little bit too hard. Uh, you need simple things that are very straightforward. Those are good for training videos. Now, if it's something really complicated, then that's not all freshmen, right? That's a different target market audience. So that's different. So that leads to my second point is, know your audience. Who is your audience? Is it all freshmen? Is it a subgroup of freshmen? Is it maybe just one department and they're freshmen students? Or is it something else? So you need to be very clear in your brain, who is this video for? And you know what? People who this video is not for them, they won't like it, but that's okay. They shouldn't like it. If everybody liked it, there's something wrong with your video. It should be focused just for those people who are your target market. And another point to remember is in your training videos, try to show, don't tell. People get tired of listening to someone talk. I bet you're tired of listening to me talking right now, right? This is a hard one. I'm telling you show, don't talk, but meanwhile I'm talking. But wait a minute, we're gonna go to the hardware table, I'm gonna show more. So even in my videos, I'm trying to show something because showing something makes your point. And in a training video, when I say show, don't tell, what I mean is what you can do is 
show someone doing something rather than explaining to do it. For example, rather than saying, you can walk down the road to the cafeteria, just show someone walking down the road to the cafeteria. Don't say it. And you can do that in what? Two seconds, three seconds. Do, 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 do. Once we see somebody walking, we get it. Do you need to know the name of the road? Okay, cut away, show the name. That's two seconds. Do, do, three seconds, two seconds, cut. You've only used up like five seconds of your 60 seconds so far. Great. That's what I mean by show, don't tell. When you show more in your video, you save time, you get more information in. Of course, you can also use things like titles, right? Words underneath at the bottom of the screen. Just remember that it's helpful to make those words as international as possible. So if it's in Chinese, maybe also include English subtitles too for our international visitors, our international students. So that's basically a training video. Let's go to the hardware table. Okay, here we are at the hardware table. And what's the hardware today? Well, we've talked about a lot of things dealing with sound. We dealt a little bit with cameras and focusing and that kind of action. We talked about planning and then going on location inside, outside. All of those things, when you get to the end, you begin then to actually shoot your video, to actually record. That means all your equipment is out. Everything is set up. Well, that's when things, in my experience, get a little bit dangerous. When I say dangerous, what I mean is all of those cords, all of those wires, all those tripods, you have these things lying all over the ground. You have your tripods, and what happens? What always happens is somebody steps on something, trips on something, pulls something, and it causes a problem. The equipment gets broken or somebody gets hurt. So, here are some things you can do to avoid, to not have those bad things happen. Remember, this whole class is about how to not make bad video, and here I'm gonna talk about how to not have bad things happen. Begin. You can use this tape to tape wire down to tape things to other things so that they don't fall over. And the great thing about this tape is it's kind of stretchy, it's nice and thick, and it's not super sticky. It's made so you can stick it to something and then later you can take it off. And then throw it away, you don't keep it, but you just, you can use it once and then throw it away. It's not super sticky, it's not that kind of tape. It's made to just hold things down temporarily. Okay, so we've got our gaffer's tape. What about these wires? Let me show you something that I like to do with long cords, like this one here. And let's say that we've got this cord, this could be, in this case it's an audio cord, but it could be a power cord, for example. And you've got your cord going maybe to a camera or an audio device, or you've got your power going to a monitor or an audio or a video recorder, whatever, whatever. Get this up on here. So this is the leg of my tripod, or maybe this is the leg of a table, or maybe this is just a tree. But what I often like to do is I like to take my cord, my wire, and I run it over here like this. I don't tie a knot, I don't tie it tight, I leave it loose, nice and loose. But why do I do that? because if somebody walks by and trips on the wire, it'll get stuck first here, and it won't pull down your camera or knock over your device or break something. I'm sure you've had that happen before where you're walking and you trip on something, but just as you begin to trip, you lift up your leg and you realize, oh, I stepped on something. If that wire is very tight, and connected to a camera. If somebody trips just a little bit, boom, your whole camera falls over. But if the wire is around something, then when somebody begins the trip, they pull the something first before the camera gets pulled on the end of the wire. You don't need to tie a knot because that would hurt the wire. That would damage the wire. You don't need to keep it very tight. Keep it kind of loose. But that way, 
Oops, let me get my wire. I'm done here. That way, you can save your device and save somebody from getting hurt or at least save something from being broken. Right? Keep it loose, wrap it around something, plug it in over there, not so tight, and then if somebody trips, boom. Okay, that's, I like that a lot. Let's continue with this safety idea because I've got more safety stuff. Let's take a look at this. Let's get this off of here. What is this? This seems strange. This has nothing to do with videoing, does it? It's a clamp at the end, a little tiny clamp, and a lanyard here, and you can pull this. But we all know what this is, don't we? We use this when we go to conferences. These are for name tags, right? Put that around your neck, and you attach your name tag on there. Yeah, okay, we all have seen these before. What is that little piece inside of there? What is this little bit here? What's this little bit? This is because you're supposed to pull this up, and then the string becomes shorter, actually becomes shorter, and you can put it on your head, and then your name tag gets further up, right? That way people are not always looking down to see your name tag, they can look up. So that's what that's for. But you know what I have found? These things are wonderful for another thing. I can use them to wrap around things. Again, like around my arm here. I pull it through, and then I can hang something on there. Well, not only that, look at my wire. I can take my wire and I can go ahead and put that through the loop and hang my wire on there, right? So these are really, really handy and I can clamp this onto something or tie it onto something or hang it onto something. Okay, that's handy. And there's another thing I like to use these for and that has to do with this other thing which is have you ever seen this paper before? I went to the hardware store, I bought a roll of this, and it's like so cheap. And what is this? Of course, this is a warning of a work area. Work area, be careful. Uh, safety first, work area. So, these are really easy for people to see, right? I like to have some of this, and you can cut it, and you can put it around some of your tripods, or you can put it on the ground near some of your equipment to help people avoid a problem. But even easier than that is to make a sign. So I took a piece of cardboard and cut it, and then I paste that on there with some hot glue. And then what else do I do? I take my lanyard, I attach it, and now I can hang this onto cameras, tripods, and other equipment, and look at that. And because it has that little piece of metal there, when you hang this, you can adjust it if it's higher or lower. Very handy, right? Think about it. How much does that cost? This plastic warning here, very little. Cardboard is just extra trash from the store and some lanyards. You can buy these. When I bought these, I couldn't even buy one. I had to buy like 100 in a, in a bag. You, you cannot buy one. So I bought like 100 for a few dollars and now look at what I've got. And there's two things that are good here. One thing is it really helps people pay attention. You put this on a tripod, you put this on a camera, you can even put it on the ground. Look at this. I made triangles out of cardboard and then when I go on a video shoot, I can fold it up when I'm not using it. When I'm using it, unfold it and just put it on the ground. Boom, like that. Set it down the table, and there you go. You can use that. Isn't that great? So it's safety, number one. Number two is when people are walking by and watching you shoot your video, this makes it look really official. And people are impressed. They're like, wow, that's really official. Those guys are really doing something big. So it makes you look like a big production, which is eh, pretty cool. I mean, you know, you gotta have some fun when you can. So remember, safety first on your production. Good luck.